F. You have ten seconds to read the situation and question number twenty one. Despite our commitment to the highest manufacturing standards, we are now looking at undertaking a product recall, which is needed to prevent any possible injuries. I've drawn up a plan to assign roles and spell out exactly what steps are required to carry out such a recall. The priority for senior members of the legal team is to explore any possible lawsuits we could be facing. For junior legal staff, I want you to look into any legal procedures we need to follow for this kind of recall. Then write up your findings so all of us can quickly and easily understand and review them. You will also all need to thoroughly review the guidelines for making changes to our current contracts, including supplier contracts, but that can come later. As we make progress on these steps, the manufacturing department will need to conduct a thorough review of production standards. Now mark your answer on your answer sheet. G. You have 10 seconds to read the situation and question number 22. It's a good thing you asked about your passport. A lot of travelers assume they can go abroad on any valid passport, but that's not always true. Canada is more lenient than other countries about allowing foreigners in with only a few months remaining on their passport, but I'd still advise you to renew it to be on the safe side. The Japanese consulate downtown is helpful in these situations. You don't have much time, so you should go tomorrow and have your passport renewed right away. Take all necessary documents, a photo, and anything else listed on their website. It usually takes five days, but it might be quicker, considering the circumstances. I wouldn't advise purchasing a ticket until you've done that, as you might not be able to reschedule, and you won't get a refund if you cancel. Now mark your answer on your answer sheet. H. You have 10 seconds to read the situation and question number 23. Welcome to Brookton Primary School. On the morning your daughter starts school, you'll receive some permission forms for school outings. You'll be asked to sign and return those within a day or two. We require all students to be fully vaccinated before the first day of the term, and any family doctor can provide the immunizations if they haven't been completed. If they have been completed, written proof of immunization should be submitted. School starts next month, so time is of the essence for those. I understand you're also requesting after-school care. For this, we'll need a letter from your employer stating your work hours and commuting time. We can provide temporary care until 6 p.m. for two weeks to give you time to get that letter. Finally, here is a list of our uniform requirements. We have a grace period of one week before the uniform is required. Now mark your answer on your answer sheet. I. You have 10 seconds to read the situation and question number 24. Unfortunately, you don't currently qualify for gold membership renewal next year. It is still possible to meet the criteria, however. As a rule, you need to spend a minimum of $4,000 a year on travel through Ezonia or book at least two weeks' accommodation at qualifying hotels. 
You've spent about $2,000 in total so far, but trying to reach the minimum would take you beyond the budget you mentioned. Still, I see you've stayed for 10 days at our partner hotels. You've already mentioned you plan to travel during the Christmas holidays, so we can book you something for then if you'd like. Just four more nights would do the trick, and that can be done within your budget. For future reference, you might also want to consider obtaining an Ezonia credit card, as you'll save an additional 5% on all flight bookings made through our website. Now, mark your answer on your answer sheet. J. You have 10 seconds to read the situation and question number 25. Government regulations have become stricter, and staff at any branch can explain the new procedures. If you're unable to visit a bank branch here in the U.S. personally, you'll need to do everything online. Access your account online and click on the Make a Payment option. Then, click on Wire Transfer. To complete the wire transfer form, you'll need a single-use security access code. To get that, you'll need to complete a two-stage authentication process. So the first thing you have to do is complete the two security questions you set up when you originally opened your account. Once you've done that, you need to enter your account password. After those steps are done, you can request the code to be sent to your pre-registered email address. You can then complete the transfer online but you'll have to re-enter your password for any subsequent transfers. Now mark your answer on your answer sheet. This is an interview with Gary Stevens, a jewelry seller in New York. We have Gary Stevens with us today. Welcome, Gary. Thank you for having me. Could you tell us a little bit about what you do? Well, I run my own business buying and selling jewelry in New York. I sell to private customers as well as other jewelers in the trade. I can help customers order what they like through a catalog, or I can have something custom made for them. I see. What are some of the issues that customers often face? When buying something, customers are often tempted by the biggest stones but this isn't always indicative of the quality of the jewelry as a whole. Likewise, customers are not aware of how valuable a piece of jewelry might be before they attempt to sell it to us. Something that they think is cheap costume jewelry might have diamonds in it, whereas an impressive looking piece might not be worth much. Sometimes customers return to my store asking to buy back a sentimental piece that they've already sold me. This is possible when I still have the item in question, but in a situation where a gold ring is scrapped, for example, you cannot simply put it back together. Especially in the case of family heirlooms, it's often better to just keep it in the family. As a word of advice to customers, I'll say, before you sell us your jewelry, it's important that you think about this decision carefully. Is there a benefit to working in a place like New York City? New York has a large jewelry district, and while this does mean competition for customers, it also allows jewelers to help one another. Someone who, for example, is skilled at resetting stones can do repairs for someone else without that expertise. There are many different companies that work in a wide variety of styles using different metals, and sometimes if we know someone who can meet a customer's needs, we can refer the customer to that person. Could you tell us about some recent trends in the industry? Due to the sharp increase in the price of gold and silver, people are increasingly selling their jewelry just for the value of the metal. While this can be an attractive option at first, to me it seems like a short-sighted decision. Fine jewelry is a work of art, just like an expensive painting or a sculpture. But the work of talented jewelers is disappearing forever because people are more interested in making a quick profit. 
Before someone decides to scrap something, I always ask them to consider it carefully. Lastly, do you have any words of wisdom for new jewelers or people interested in becoming one? First of all, it's important to have a lot of background knowledge. By studying gemology or something similar, one can identify the cut and quality of stones used and can tell genuine items from, for example, cut glass made to look like a stone. Precision and attention to detail are also necessary when making jewelry. If you happen to ruin a diamond or expensive stone while cutting and sculpting it, it can be difficult to fix your mistake. Gary, thank you very much for your time. It was my pleasure. Questions. Number 26. What is an issue Gary says many people face when selling their jewelry? Number 27. What does Gary say about selling jewellery for the price of the metal? Your time is up.